man behind UP's Jungle Raj. Badshah of blood no more. But Dawn's kin cry foul. No report comes, no anything says, but it's just for such. Is there any proof of slow poison claims? It's not true, it's true. It's true that this is not true. Was death due to illness or foul play? Ansari Death Showdown is our top focus on 6 p.m. Prime. Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nandakopal. The news that came in late last night of Dawn and politician Mukhtar Ansari's death has sent shockwaves across the country. And over the next one hour, as part of 6 p.m. Prime, the Indian Political League will be getting you all the updates on the politics that's playing out over Mukhtar Ansari's death, as some have questioned the circumstances of his demise. As always, we'll not just be getting you the latest from the world of politics, but also from the world of cricket. Because not to forget, the Indian Premier League is also underway. So as I get to the Indian Political League, Nikhil Nas will be getting you the Indian Premier League updates. Nikhil, good evening. What can we expect from you in the next 30 minutes? Well, Akshita, I know that one of the biggest stories in the Indian Political League at the moment is fresh IT notices to the Congress party. But in the Indian Premier League, I am going to tell you about a young batter from Gohati that's put on notice all the bowlers around the Indian Premier League with some very aggressive batting of his. In fact, the boy that we're talking about is Riyan Parag. But more than the current story that is unfolding in the IPL with regards to Parag, it's actually his controversial backstory that's even more fascinating. That's coming your way at 6.40 p.m. So at 6.40, you can watch out for those updates from Nikhil. As Nikhil pointed out, we'll also be talking about the IT notices that have been shot across once again to the Congress party. <laughs> And let's begin with the latest in the investigation into the Bengaluru Rameshwaram Cafe blast. The NIA has now announced a reward for any information on the accused. A bounty of 10 lakh rupees has been announced. This even as the main accused at this point, uh, Musafir, as well as Abdul Mateen Taha, are still absconding. Remember, one of the conspirators has been arrested. But the main accused, Musafir Shasib Hussein, who reportedly carried out that blast, who was caught on CCTV cameras with his face completely covered, is yet to be nabbed. Their pictures also have now been put out along with that big wanted poster that's now been published by the NIA. Arvind Oja is joining us with more details on this. Arvind, pehli baar NIA ne ye pictures bhi release kar diya. Ab tak ek conspirator ko giraftar kiya hai. Lekin jo do main accused hai, us pe kuch leads nahi hai agencies ke paas abhi. नहीं देखिए जो दो मेन कॉन्स्परेटर हैं उनकी आ, उनकी पहचान जरूर एनआईए ने कर ली है उसके अलावा और भी मल्टीपल एजेंसीज लगी थी और ये क्लियर हो चुका है कि बेंगलुरु में जो रामेश्वरम कैफे में ब्लास्ट हुआ था जो आईडी रखा था जिसने उसका नाम मुसविर हुसैन मुसविर हुसैन साजिब था जबकि कॉन्स्परेसी में जो शामिल था वो था अब्दुल मतीन ताहा ये दोनों कर्नाटका के ही रहने वाले हैं और मुसविर हुसैन साजिब ने जाकर खुद आईडी रखा था जो सीसीटीवी में कैप्चर हुआ था अब इसमें अक्षता हैरानी की बात यह है कि इन दोनों पर एनआईए ने 10 दस लाख रुपए का इनाम तो रखा है लेकिन ये दोनों ही कर्नाटका में एक टेरर केस में पहले से ही वांटेड हैं। 2020 के आईएसआईएस के केस में जो मुसविर हुसैन साजिब जिसने आई रखी थी और जो अब्दुल मतीन ताहा ये दोनों वॉन्टेड है इन पर पहले से ही तीन लाख का इनाम है यानी ये एक टेरर केस में वांटेड थे इन पर तीन लाख का इनाम था और इसके बाद भी आ, इन्होंने रामेश्वर रामेश्वरम कैफे में ब्लास्ट किया अब इन पर एनआईए ने दस दस लाख रुपए का इनाम रखा है और इनकी तलाश लगातार की जा रही है we will track the latest on that, but as of now, no leads with the agencies on the two main accused, including the man who carried out that blast at the Rameshwaram Cafe. Thanks very much, Arvind, for joining us with those details. We'll switch across to more breaking news coming in.
Now, there's a video doing the rounds of Tamil Nadu BJP chief Anna Malai, who is the BJP's candidate in Coimbatore, allegedly handing over money to a woman after she performed Aarti for him. Now, this video that's been going viral has triggered a big controversy with the returning officer in Coimbatore also taking cognizance of this video and has confirmed that the video has now been forwarded for police verification to take the necessary action. You can see that footage on your screens. This is a video that's doing the rounds on social media where the woman does an aarti after which Anna Malay uh, purportedly is handing over something to her. Now, according to allegations, they are saying that this is cash being handed over to the woman voter. Let's take this across to Shilpa Nair for more details. Shilpa, any details about this particular video? There's a huge controversy playing out. Police verification is awaited. But is this a video of an incident that's happened now or of earlier? Because there are counterclaims also coming in on social media. Well, that's right, Akshita. In fact, uh, there is a video, of course, that is doing the round. Several social media handles uh, have been putting out this video uh, where Tamil Nadu BJP Chief K. Anna Malai is seen uh, giving uh, some amount of money to a woman who performed Aarti for him. Now, this is a ritual, uh, you know, those are familiar with Tamil Nadu politics and, uh, you know, the culture here. Uh, several politicians, uh, several, uh, you know, women perform Aarti uh, whenever top political leaders come uh, for campaigning or otherwise whenever there's a political event. Uh, so this has been a tradition, uh, but the question, of course, is whether this has been taken, this video or this incident, did this take place after the model code of conduct came into Correct. effect? Uh, because in that case, uh, it could be, uh, you know, problematic, and that is the reason why several uh, people on social media, several social media users, tagged the uh, Coimbatore uh, district collector, who is also the returning officer, uh, saying that uh, Anamale was giving money to a, a, a voter, and this is, of course, serious offence, is what many of them pointed out. Uh, the district mm -hmm. collector, of course has now responded to those uh, you know, tweets or uh, those uh, social media posts saying that they have taken cognizance of this video. It has been sent uh, or forwarded to the police department for uh, further investigation. Uh, uh, they need to, of course, uh, understand and ascertain whether this was a video or this a, was this an incident that took place after the MCC kicked in or was it taken before. So all that... So of we'll see what really the police uh, investigation throws up. The, the timing of the video here is most crucial because that will really establish whether there's a violation here and whether action can be taken actually against Anamalai. Thanks very much, Shilpa, for joining us with all of those details. All right, let's switch over now to our top focus here on 6 p.m. Prime. We've been getting you the latest on the death of Don and politician Mukhtar Ansari. He died purportedly of a heart attack. His post-mortem has been completed. His mortal remains. His body is now being shifted to Ghazipur, which is where, in fact, the funeral will take place in all likelihood tomorrow morning. But there has been, in fact, several questions being raised, some by politicians, some by Mukhtar Ansari's family. They've claimed that this was a result of slow poisoning of Ansari in prison that led to him suffering a cardiac arrest. Ansari's son claimed that his father was given poison in his food and it was on March 19th that he was given this poison at night and days later the symptoms have shown up. But is there really any proof to corroborate or back this claim that it was slow poisoning that killed Mukhtar Ansari? We'll decode that for you in our next report. This is dreaded gangster turned Neta Mukhtar Ansari's last phone call with his family. A day later, he died of heart attack in a UP jail. His family is crying foul. Ansari's son alleges that his father was slowly poisoned to death, ruling out cardiac arrest, as mentioned in his health bulletin. The family alleges that Ansari was poisoned on the night of March 19th. उनके शरीर को आप देखेंगे कहीं नहीं कह सकता कि कोई आदमी बीमार आदमी मरा है Ansari's family has demanded his post mortem to be conducted by a panel of AIMS doctors from Delhi 
In their today has accessed a conversation of Ansari with his son and daughter-in-law from jail. His son spoke of the poison even on the call with his gangster father. Around 20 years ago, gangster politician Mukhtar Ansari's umpire was at its peak. The then deputy SP of police, while speaking to India today, recalled the horrors that unfolded under Ansari. No police officer had the audacity to confront him, but it was Shailendra Singh who slapped POTA charges on the gangster. मुझे इस बात का संतोष है कि जो इसने किया था उस तरह से ये खुद अपने ऊपर ये तिल तिल करके नहीं मरना कहते हैं तो उस तरह ये मरा है तो जो किया था वो सामने आया और मुझे इस बात की रिलीफ है With Ansari's family claiming mystery around his death, the UP police is under pressure to conduct a thorough investigation to rule out any foul play. With Kumar Abhishek in Lucknow, Samarth Srivastav in Banda and Abhishek in Ghazipur, Bureau Report, India Today. And let me open this up also to all of our reporters who are joining us. We also have with us Shams Tahir Khan, Managing Editor of Crime Tuck. Also with us is Santosh Sharma, who is headed right now to Ghazipur, uh, tracking the body of Mukhtar Ansari as it's being moved uh, to Ghazipur right now. Abhishek Mishra is also joining us live from Ghazipur. That's where the funeral of Mukhtar Ansari will take place. But let me begin now with Shams. Shams, this uh, poisoning ke angle, hai, is there any truth to this? बिकॉज जो अंसारी के परिवार को कहना है वो ये है कि अंसारी बिल्कुल ठीक था और सडनली ये हुआ आक्षिता इसमें दो चीजें एक मुख्तार अंसारी की दो बातें हो रही है एक है कि कार्डिया करेस्ट जो मेडिकल रिपोर्ट में है दूसरा है स्लो पॉइजन मुख्तार अंसारी की बात करें तो मेडिकल एक हिस्ट्री है वो है हार्ट रिलेटेड डिजीज की और करीब दस बारह साल से लखनऊ के किंग जॉर्ज मेडिकल कॉलेज हॉस्पिटल में कार्डियोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट में इलाज भी चल रहा था लेकिन अगर बाद में हम आते हैं तो नाइन्थ जनवरी 2018 ये वो तारीख थी जब बांदा जेल में मुख्तार अंसारी बनता और उसकी वाइफ अफशा और बाकी फैमिली मेंबर मुलाकात के लिए आए थे जेल के अंदर मुख्तार अंसारी और अफशा ने चाय पी और चाय पीते ही मुख्तार अंसारी बेहोश हो गए और फिर देखा देखी अफशा भी उस वक्त गश खाकर गिर पड़ी बाद में दोनों को इसी बांदा मेडिकल कॉलेज में ले जाया गया जहां कल रात मुख्तार को ले जाया गया था वहां जाने के बाद पता चला कि दोनों को हार्ट अटैक हुआ दिल का दौरा पड़ा फिर मुख्तार को वहां से लखनऊ के एजीएम ले जाया गया वहां पे इलाज चला उसके एक साल के बाद फिर वो रोपट और फिर तीन 2021 में वो वापस यहां पहुंचता है मुख्तार अंसारी बांदा वापस जेल में और तीन साल लगभग ये हो जाएगा सेवेंथ अप्रैल को नेक्स्ट मंथ बांदा जेल में रहते हुए इन तीन सालों में कभी कोई कंप्लेन नहीं आई पहली कंप्लेन आई नाइनटीन मार्च को और ये कंप्लेन भी इसलिए सामने आई कि बीस मार्च को मऊ की पी और एम कोर्ट में वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग के जरिए मुख्तार अंसारी की सुनवाई थी और मुख्तार ने तब ये कहा था कि 19 मार्च की रात खाने में कुछ पॉइजन मिलाकर उसे मारने की साजिश रची जा रही है कई लोगों के नाम भी लिए 20 मार्च को फिर मुख्तार अंसारी की तबीयत ठीक थी लेकिन 19 के बाद फिर अचानक 26 को तबीयत खराब होती है और छब्बीस की रात तीन बजे मुख्तार अंसारी जेल के वॉशरूम में बेहोश हो जाता है जिसके बाद सुबह साढ़े बजे उसके बांदा मेडिकल कॉलेज ले जाया जाता है वहां सत्रह घंटे तक उसको एडमिट रखा जाता है इलाज होता है और फिर 26 की ही रात 8:30 के आसपास वापस जेल भेजा जाता है लेकिन जेल आने के फिर 48 एट आवर्स के बाद 28 मार्च यानी कल शाम अराउंड 6:35 थर्टी फाइव मुख्तार अंसारी फिर से बेहोश हो जाता और ये उसकी लास्ट बेहोशी थी तो यहाँ पर अगर हम पूरी बात करें फैमिली एलिगेशन और सारी चीजों की तो एक तरफ नाइनटीन मार्च से है टू में भी एलिगेशन लगा लेकिन फिर लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स में नहीं लगा लेकिन उन्नीस मार्च से ये कहानी फिर शुरू हो गई है 
अब इसका सबसे आसान है क्योंकि उसमें पॉलिटिक्स भी हो रही इल्जाम भी लग रहे हैं पोस्टमार्टम रिपोर्ट मौत की वजह बताएगा लेकिन पॉइजन है या नहीं इसकी रिपोर्ट विसरा के जरिए सामने आएगी और विसरा की रिपोर्ट के लिए हमें कम से कम मुझे लगता है ट्वेंटी डेज वन मंथ हमें वेट करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि विसरा की रिपोर्ट आने में वक्त लगता है तो अगर ये मौत पॉइजन से हुई है तो ये विसरा रिपोर्ट से क्लियर हो जाएगा बाकी पोस्टमार्टम रिपोर्ट से जो मौत की वजह है वो पता चलेगी हालांकि इसमें पूरी एक अजीब चीज भी हुई कि कल जब मेडिकल बुलेटिन जारी किया बांदा हॉस्पिटल ने रात को तो उसमें एक लाइन थी लास्ट और वो ये थी कि मौत की वजह कार्डियक अरेस्ट और मुख्तार को जेल से अस्पताल गए एक घंटा हुआ था तो बिना पोस्टमार्टम के और बिना किसी उसके कोई भी डॉक्टर या अस्पताल सिर्फ बॉडी को देख कर ये नहीं बता सकता है कि मौत का रीजन क्या है तो यहाँ पे ये भी है कि मेडिकल बुलेटिन में सीधे उसी वक्त कार्डियक अरेस्ट रीजन क्यों लिखना क्या मजबूरी थी ये भी एक जांच की बात है इट्स अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट यू हैव रेस्ड शम्स लेकिन अगर और आप बोल रहे थे जो पॉलिटिकल ब्लेम गेम अभी चल रहा है ओपोजिशन ये बोल रहे हैं कि देखो अतीक अहमद के साथ क्या हुआ विकास दुबे के साथ क्या हुआ है एनकाउंटर राज है उत्तर प्रदेश में क्या मुख्तार अंसारी का कुछ इन्फ्लुएंस था उत्तर प्रदेश में कि अगर मतलब ऐसा उसके विथ इज डेथ हैपनिंग कुछ पॉलिटिकल डिविडेंस या माइलेज मिल सकता है देखिए मुख्तार अंसारी का पूर्वांचल में खासतौर पर अगर हम इलेक्शन को देखते हुए करें तो पूरा चाहे गाजीपुर हो मऊ हो यहाँ तक के आजमगढ़ हो बरेली के आसपास हो अच्छा खासा मुख्तार अंसारी का वहाँ पे असर है और यही वजह मुख्तार अंसारी का तो असर इतना है कि लास्ट 15 ईयर 2002 से 2017 तक वो जेल के अंदर था और तीनों उसने जो इलेक्शन था लोकल विधानसभा का जेल में रहकर बिना कैंपेनिंग के जीता तो ये उसका असर है उसके भाई अफजाल अंसारी वो सांसद रहे चुने गए तो असर है और इलेक्शन का टाइम है और ये जो टाइमिंग है इस वजह से भी ये सारी जो पॉलिटिक्स इसमें आई है वो इस वक्त शामिल है लेकिन हालांकि अफसोस की बात ये है कि क्राइम एक क्रिमिनल एक माफिया एक डॉन और उसके साथ इन पॉलिटिक्स को कम से कम अलग रखना चाहिए एक क्रिमिनल को क्रिमिनल की तरह देखना चाहिए लेकिन साथ ही ये भी होना चाहिए कि क्रिमिनल को सजा कौन देगी अदालत पुलिस जेल लेकिन अगर इसके अलावा कुछ होता है तो फिर सवाल उठते हैं और फाइनली शम्स क्या आपको लगता है कि जो मुख्तार अंसारी और जैसे आप बोल रहे थे काफी इन्फ्लुएंशियल था देर वर मेनी क्वेश्चन लॉन्ग रोप बाई प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट और क्या अभी क्रैकडाउन शुरू हुआ है योगी सरकार ने शुरू किया था क्या मुख्तार अंसारी के खिलाफ देखिए ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी तक मुख्तार अंसारी को कोई इशू नहीं था बांदा जेल में जब ट्वेंटी एटीन में था वो और जब वहां पर पहली बार उसको दिल का दौरा पड़ा था फिर रोपड़ गया था तब भी कोई इशू नहीं था 2020 के बाद जब योगी सरकार ने ऐसे सारे जो माफिया और जो गैंगस्टर एक्ट और इन सारी चीज़ों के ऊपर क्रैकडाउन करना शुरू किया ऐसे ऐसे लोगों की लिस्ट बनानी शुरू की उसके बाद जेल के अंदर गैंग्स कैसे ऑपरेट करते हैं ये भी सबको पता है तो फिर ऐसे जो बड़े माफिया थे उनको खास तौर पर घेरने की कोशिश की गई उसकी वजह से तकलीफ हुई और उसकी वजह से फिर सारी चीज़ें भी हुई तो मुख्तार के जो ट्वेंटी से पहले का पूरा एक एरा था एटीज से लेकर ट्वेंटी तक वो डिफरेंट था 2020 के बाद लास्ट टू थ्री इयर्स या फोर इयर्स उसके लिए ज्यादा मुश्किल भरा था Interesting. Thanks very much, Shams, as always, for joining us. Uh, you know, your perspective adds a whole layer to this story. As Shams was also pointing out, the post-mortem has been completed. But rather curious to note how the medical bulletin already more or less decided and concluded the cause of death as far as Mukhtar Ansari goes. But let's also add a caveat here that there is absolutely no evidence of any of the claims being made of slow poisoning. So that's something that hopefully, with the post-mortem report coming out, we will get some clarity on. Let me. Bring in our reporters also on this. Santosh Sharma, who's joining us right now, tracking uh, the convoy that's carrying the mortal remains of Mukhtar Ansari to Gazipur. We have Abhishek Mishra joining us live from Gazipur. This is where Mukhtar Ansari's residence is also. Santosh Sharma, to you first. Get us the latest updates. You know there was a concern and huge worry, rightfully so, that there could be a breakdown of law and order. So all the movement that we've seen is post Friday prayers. Well, is everything smooth? Has everything gone as per plan? And definitely, everything is going on smooth and as per plan. As yesterday in the evening, when the when the Banda uh, Medical College administration declared the death of Mafia Don uh, Mukhtar Ansari uh, died due to cardiac arrest. After that, the law and order uh, was going to be tense. But before that, the homework was already done by the. Uh, chief of the UP Police, uh, DGP Prashant Kumar, ADG Law and Order, Amitabh Yash, and also the STF Chief. 
the both the cops have uh, done a meeting and issued an instruction to all the all the district police officers uh, to maintain mm -hmm. the law and order and increase the patrolling mainly in the area uh, they have to do the area domination with the CAPF already uh, given to them uh, regarding the general elections and uh, that is the result of uh, of the pre plan of the of the higher officials that uh, not a single incident took place in uh, in the state of Uttar Pradesh uh, with 875 districts. Not okay. a single incident took place, nor any uh, agitation, nor any violation, or and no no, uh, no one decided to come on the streets on on the road uh, on 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 the death of Mukhtar Ansari. Yeah. This is the um, this is the result. And uh, no, let me show you the pictures. Uh, I'm immediately. Uh, heading sure. towards the Ghazipur. Uh, the convoy taking uh, the body of uh, uh, Mafia Don Mukhtar Ansari. I'm, uh, I have reached uh, the Chitrakoot district and uh, let me show you the visuals. Uh, this is the convoy. Uh, this is the convoy uh, going through the market of uh, Chitrakoot uh, market. And uh, it is approximately uh, 400 kilometers uh, distance have to be covered. And uh, in, the, in the visuals, uh, you can see the prison van. After that, the ambulance. And uh, after that, a white and there were gadis there and SUVs there. There are two family uh, vehicles are following this uh, ambulance. Uh, in one vehicle, there is uh, Umar Ansari, the younger uh, younger son of uh, Mukhtar Ansari, and in okay. the white uh, SUV, that is the endeavor. Uh, in, in that uh, endeavor, there is a daughter-in-law of Mukhtar Ansari, wife of uh, MLA Abbas Ansari. Nikhat is there. Okay. Uh, so uh, family members, family members are being allowed to also accompany right now Ansari's mortal remains as they make their way through the uh, parts of Uttar Pradesh where they head to Ghazipur. It's almost a six-hour journey, so it will take some time for the body to reach there. Tomorrow morning is when the funeral will take place. Let me take this across to Abhishek Mishra, who's joining us live from Ghazipur. He's been filing reports also from the funeral site uh, where the body will be laid to rest. Abhishek, the family, of course, has been crying conspiracy. They believe that there was, in fact, slow poisoning. We know that they've also sought that uh, an Ames Delhi team come in and conduct another post-mortem. Uh, you've got Abbas Ansari seeking permission to be a part of the funeral as well. Get us those updates on the family's front. Well, absolutely, Akshata, and throughout this, uh, you know, incident, the family has been vocal about the fact that what has happened. First, they referred it as a slow poisoning case, and directly asking question over that why no nothing was uh, taken into consideration on time now India today access the audio we also uh, uh, listened to what uh, uh, Mukhtar has shared with his son Correct. and the daughter-in-law and clearly saying that he's feeling weak he believes that he won't survive and all sort of allegations now what is now also important is that his son has not got the approval to be part of this funeral. Another thing that they were demanding to have an, uh, to have the post-mortem to be done through by the AIMS uh, doctors, that is also not uh, in the picture. And now the mortal remains are on the way, has reached Chitrakoot and on the way to, uh, Ghazi, uh, to Ghazipur and we're expecting it to okay. come midnight. So that is what uh, is uh, currently the situation is. The administration okay. is prepared for the final rights. DM has already confirmed us and they've spoken that tomorrow morning uh, the cremation uh, the body will be buried under the soil and the relatives and all the members of the family who were very vocal from throughout the year throughout the day has uh, now waiting for that moment for the body to arrive here sure. and the situation huge... here in the mom uh, yeah. where we are right now is quite peaceful it's smooth and not okay. much of a concern as for a security and other challenges so there's for huge the security deployment yes. in Ghazipur ensuring that nothing untoward takes place uh, and the UP administration has ensured that that there were no protests no breakdown of law and order in any part of Uttar Pradesh almost immediately as soon as the news broke that Mukhtar Ansari was extremely ill and rushed to hospital thanks very much Abhishek and Santosh for joining us with those details we'll keep coming across to you for the latest updates but just recapping for you exactly what Mukhtar Ansari's reign of terror actually looked like
Imagine he was actually in prison for the last many years. Since the 2000s, since early 2000s, he's been in prison, shifted from one jail to another because in every prison that he was lodged, he would more or less take control of the jail and then continue to run his mafia, his empire from behind bars. So much so that he even managed to contest elections without campaigning a single day, as Shams told you, still managed to even win elections, all of this from operating in jail. Let's tell you, in fact, in our next report, how he was transferred through several jails, even out of Uttar Pradesh, and still managed to get everyone to do his bidding. Dreaded Uttar Pradesh don't turn political leader, Mukhtar Ansari was jailed in 2005. But his reign of terror did not end with jail. The gangster continued to run his crime empire from inside prison. Ansari was shifted from jail to jail, but he still wielded power from within the prison. Whether Ghazipur or Agra in Uttar Pradesh or Ropar in Punjab, whichever jail he was shifted to, jailers were known to either resign or go on leave. जब उसको अंदर लेने की बात आई तो मैंने कहा तलाशी इसकी लो इन्होंने कहा आज तक मेरी तलाशी कौन हिम्मत पड़ती नहीं किसी की आप क्या तुम्हारी क्या हिम्मत है मैंने कहा भाई मैं जेलर हूं यहां पर कोई भी आदमी को मैं इस तरह से निर्द्वंद नहीं जाने दे सकता उसके बाद ये ताऊ में आ गए इन्होंने एकदम से ही कहा कि मेरे ये दो आदमी आ रहे हैं इनको रोक के दिखाइए हिम्मत हो तो मैंने कहा इनकी हिम्मत हो तो ये आगे बढ़ के दिखा दें जब ये गाजीपुर जेल में आया और गाजीपुर जेल का जो बैरक नंबर टेन था इसको इसने पार्टीशन करके एक पोर्शन को अपना डीलक्स सूट बना लिया और वहाँ पर इसके लिए मछली का तालाब खोदा गया जेल के अंदर जेल के भीतर जी हाँ और उस समय के डीएम जो थे वो जाते थे जेल में मुख्तार के साथ बैडमिंटन खेलते जेल के ठीक सामने उसने कुछ कमरे बनवाए थे जहाँ पे इसके लोग रुकते थे During the rule of Mayawati of the Bahujan Samaj Party or Mulayam Singh Yadav of the Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh, prison became a second home for Mukhtar Ansari where he received VVIP treatment. When the gangster was shifted to Ghazipur prison, the telephone bill of the prison shot up. Ansari used to communicate with his gang from within the prison multiple times every day. Even though Ansari was in prison, his network spread across six states, including Gujarat and Maharashtra, continued to grow. However, in 2017, things changed for Mukhtar Ansari. While addressing an election rally in Mao, Prime Minister declared jails would henceforth be treated as jails. यहाँ कोई भी बाहुबली जेल जाता है तो मुस्कराता हुआ जाता है ऐसा क्यों भाई? सारा सुख भाई भाव उनको जेल में उपलब्ध होता है वक्त बदल चुका है। 11 मार्च को चुनाव नतीजे आने के बाद हम सच्चे अर्थ में जेल को जेल बना करके रखेंगे फिर हम देखते हैं कैसे गुजारा करते हैं आफ्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ टुक ओवर एस चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश इन 2017 मुख्तार अंसारी स्टार्टेड फेसिंग ट्रबल इन प्रिजन he was shifted to Roper Prison in 2019 for investigation of an extortion case in Mohali, Punjab. While in Roper Jail, Ansari did not apply for bail as the prison had become a comfortable second home for him. The gangster's luxury life in prison came to a halt when he was transferred to Banda Jail in Uttar Pradesh on the 7th of April, 2021. Mukhtar Ansari breathed his last in the Banda jail 
where initial post-mortem report seems to indicate he died of a heart attack on Thursday. Bureau report, India Today. So there are some opposition parties who have also questioned the death of Mukhtar Ansari, particularly after his family has spoken out, uh, peddling this slow poisoning theory. Some opposition leaders have demanded a detailed investigation, but the BJP has questioned the opposition for raising suspicion over Ansari's death, saying here was a dreaded gangster, here was a man who had murder cases against him, finally ending his terror of reign, and you've got the opposition politicizing this. Let's get you all the reactions now in our next report. Dreaded gangster turned politician Mukhtar Ansari died at the age of 60 in Uttar Pradesh's Banda prison on Thursday after he suffered a cardiac arrest. But politics has erupted over his death after suspicions raised by Ansari's family that he was being poisoned in prison. Opposition parties, including the SP, BSP and RJD, are demanding a detailed inquiry into Ansari's death. Congress MP Adhiranjan Chaudhary took a jibe at the BJP, alleging total failure of law and order in the state, especially in jails of UP. Bahana banate huye Uttar Pradesh mein ek dahshat ki mahal paida hote hain. Hum sab jante hain, kyunki jail khana ke andar jab police hirasat mein rehte hain, tab bhi logon ko goli se bhun diya jate hain. ये हिंदुस्तान में और कहीं नहीं है जो उत्तर प्रदेश में है यूपी कांग्रेस लीडर इमरान मसूद डिस्क्राइब अंसारी डेथ एज मर्डर द बीजेपी वॉज क्विक टू हिट बैक रिजेक्टिंग द चार्जेस एज अ बिड फॉर पॉलिटिकल माइलेज मुख्तार भाई ने एप्लीकेशन देकर 19 तारीख को ये बताया था कि मुझे स्लो पॉइजनिंग की जा रही है और इस तरह से मेरे मतलब बिल्कुल स्वस्थ आदमी एकदम गिरावट महसूस करेगा तो उसे खुद महसूस होगा उन्हें लगा था कि मुझे स्लो पॉइजनिंग की जा रही है और स्लो पॉइजनिंग के बाद उन्होंने कहा मेरी कभी भी हत्या हो सकती है कुछ लोगों की आदत सी बन गई है कि इस तरह के किसी भी मुद्दे को चाहे वो कितना भी संवेदनशील मुद्दा हो उसका इमोशनल एक्सप्लाइटेशन करो और उस इमोशनल एक्सप्लाइटेशन के पीछे उनकी मकसद और मंशा होती है कि देश के सौहार्द के माहौल को देश के समावेशी माहौल को कैसे जो है उस पर सांप्रदायिक तड़का लगाओ यूपी चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ इज अनफेस्ड ही सेट विमेन एंड बिजनेसमैन आर ऑल सेफ नाउ इन यूपी आज आप देख रहे होंगे आज यूपी में कर्फ्यू भी नहीं है दंगा भी नहीं है आज यूपी में बेटी और व्यापारी दोनों सुरक्षित है the family of former bjp mla krishnanand rai who ansari murdered visited kashi vishwanath temple and declared that justice is finally done ji bhakt hai baba ke goraknath ke gorak peech ke hum log bahut purane bhakt rahe hain aur unka aashirwad mila hai baba vishwanath ke darshan karne aaye hain aaj usi ka natija hai ki aaj ye din dekhne ko mila hai bada din hai hamare liye to vishesh bahut khushi ka din hai mere liye diwali hai aaj ka din the administration has formed a three member team to conduct a probe into death of mukhtar ansari bureau report india today actor and now politician kangana ranaut hit the campaign today in mandi in the constituency that she'll be fighting from and has spoken out on congress neta supriya shrinath's alleged comments against her or the post that was put up uh, on a social media profile from which shrinath of course distanced herself kangana however has slammed supriya shrinath for the same saying that this is in fact the congress's mindset and it's an insult of the women of mandi by the congress kangana has said that this is the congress's petty mentality for the sisters and daughters of mandi that has now been exposed let's play out for you exactly what kangana ranaut had to say unki jo shikh netritva hai rahul gandhi wo kehte hain ki jo hinduon mein shakti hai use mujhe nasht karna hai is tarah ki baatein karte hain wo zahir si baat hai fir unke jo spokes person hai wo kehte hain ki मंडी की जो लड़कियां हैं उनके भाव क्या चल रहे हैं 
आप देख लीजिए जिन लोगों की सोच ये है जो बेटियों के और बहनों के भाव लगाते हैं वो लोग आपके कभी नहीं हो सकते ये आप याद रखिएगा All right, so political temperatures soaring across the country in the national capital, in Delhi. The focus is on Arvind Kejriwal's arrest. Since his arrest, and now that he remains in ED lockup, we've seen the Ahmadmi party upping the ante. And how? By using Sunita Kejriwal, Arvind Kejriwal's wife, and constant video statements being put out by her, saying that she's reading out the message from her husband. Today, a campaign was launched named Kejriwal Ko Ashirwad. So Sunita Kejriwal, in her statement that she put out, a video statement, she urged citizens to support Kejriwal by sending him blessings, by sending him prayers. They've launched a WhatsApp campaign. She released a WhatsApp number for people to send across their messages. And she said that when she gets to meet Arvind Kejriwal, she will deliver all of these messages. Remember, Sunita Kejriwal is the only one who has access to the Delhi CM, gets to meet him every single day. So almost every two, three days, you have a video statement being released by her, interestingly, in the exact same setup in the chief minister's chair. And that's what set off tongues wagging or whether she's going to be taking over from Arvind Kejriwal. Now, you had Sunita Kejriwal asserting that Kejriwal has challenged the tyrants and dictators of the country. The ED, meanwhile, has accused Arvind Kejriwal of withholding crucial details, including passwords, tax and financial details. The probe agencies allege that Kejriwal is not cooperating in the investigation. And not just that, the enforcement directorate taking this investigation forward has also summoned Punjab excise officials as well. Now, as per ED sources, factories of vendors who didn't pay bribes were actually shut down by the Aam Admi Party. Atishi, Delhi minister, has hit back at ED, alleging that the enforcement director wants Arvind Kejriwal's mobile password because the BJP wants it. And for them, to give them a message, you don't need to be part of the army party. You are from any party, any other. Arvind Ji, send a message to Arvind Ji. सभी युवा महिलाएं बुजुर्ग बच्चे अमीर गरीब सब लोग अपने भाई अपने बेटे अरविंद जी को कुछ ना कुछ जरूर लिखें कि मात्र कुछ महीने पहले पुराने फोन को ईडी क्यों देखना चाहती है क्योंकि ये किसी जांच से तो जुड़ा नहीं हो सकता ये एक्साइज पॉलिसी के फॉर्मुलेशन से तो जुड़ा नहीं हो सकता कुछ महीने पुराने फोन में लोकसभा चुनाव लड़ने की स्ट्रेटजी मिलेगी तो अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के फोन का पासवर्ड ईडी को नहीं चाहिए अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के फोन का पासवर्ड भारतीय जनता पार्टी को चाहिए so yesterday we saw Arvind Kejriwal putting forth his own arguments in court in a passionate defense, in a spirited defense that he put up for about 5-10 minutes. He spoke on why he believed this was nothing but a political conspiracy. Now as part of arguing for himself, he mentioned the name of Sarath Reddy, a Hyderabad businessman who was also questioned in this very case. Now, remember that the Enforcement Directorate had arrested Reddy back in November 2022. And then in 2023, the Delhi court allowed the businessman to turn an approver. So from accused, he became approver in this particular case and granted him a pardon in the case. So let's get you details of exactly what the context is as far as Sarath Reddy's role in this case is concerned and what Arvind Kejriwal's allegation is. A high-profile businessman on the board of India's second-largest pharmaceutical company, valued at over Rs. 63,000 crore. P. Sharad Chandra Reddy, now at the centre of the political tussle over the country's most high-profile ED case. Arrested in Delhi liquor policy case on November 10, 2022, Sharat Chandra Reddy turned approver in June 2023 before getting bail on health grounds. But this wasn't the first time his Hyderabad Pharma company got embroiled in a major political scandal. 
More than a decade before he was linked with the alleged Delhi liquor scam, Reddy's company was named accused in another high-profile CBI case related to Andhra Chief Minister Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy. On Thursday, the arrested Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal pointed out that Sharath Reddy paid Rs 54 crore to the BJP through electoral bonds. So there are six words used in Section 3. Use, project, convert, etc. or receive. When none of this is shown, this was not even able to be shown in Manish Sisodia, who's one closer, allegedly. This rival is one far removed. So you actually, and, and how do I argue this, uh, Rajdi? Your own grounds of arrest till yesterday are only these four uh, chaps, these four star witnesses. A review of bond data published by the Election Commission shows a gradual shift towards the BJP in the company's allocation since 2021 to its parent and subsidiaries Orbingo Pharma, APL Healthcare and UGA Pharma Specialities. The donation peaked at Rs 50 crores in November 2023. But who exactly is Sharath Reddy? According to corporate records, 39-year-old Reddy is a graduate in business administration with experience in procurement, logistics, clinical trials, trading and information technology. He's the son of the company's co-founder, P. V. Ram Prashad Reddy, a clerk turned billionaire pharmacist. Sharath Reddy is married to the daughter of the current managing director, K. Nityanand Reddy. Even after his arrest, he was only relieved from the company's executive responsibilities, citing temporary inability to perform executive functions. However, he continued as a director on the board, reinforcing his ground in a huge farm empire. Bureau Report, India Today. I'm wrapping up this edition of 6 p.m. Prime. Thanks very much for tuning in. Have a great weekend.